Additive manufacturing has enabled medical devices to become significantly more advanced in the last decade. In the case of orthopedic implants, 3D printing the lattice structures directly onto the device has enabled the designer to manipulate critical parameters such as beam thickness, pore size, and lattice density. With this degree of granular control, modern implants have seen an improvement in their ability to anchor onto bone, also known as osseointegration. And in addition, this greatly consolidates the production process, allowing the products to reach market in a shorter amount of time. Hello everyone, Yuki here, and I'm going to show you how you can generate osseointegrative pore structures, make quick design changes, and easily create workflows that are reusable on other parts. By leveraging these capabilities and anthropology to develop their medical devices, we've seen customers reduce the overall product design cycle time by up to 90%. Let's dive right in. To start off, I imported my CAD assembly. In this case, I'm going to bring in my ALIF model, which I have pre-segmented into solid and porous coding regions. Once I've imported them, I can convert these CAD bodies into implicit bodies and topologies native format. First, I indicate which region I want to fill with lattice. In this case, I'll be dragging my porous coding region. I can then select a unit cell I want to use. In this case, I'll use a gyroid unit cell. I can then specify my cell size and my wall thickness. And just like that, I have created a gyroid lattice as my porous coating. For example, if the unit cell is something I am looking to adjust, I can take out the gyroid unit cell and bring in something like a body center cubic lattice unit cell and the workflow will seamlessly regenerate. Now in terms of scalability, we have applied a single lattice structure to a single part. If we had a larger product family or an entirely different product line, and topology enables the redeployment of your lattice design workflow to any other part you wish. For example, I can fill in the same lattice parameters as above and drag in this acetabular cup and we can see that workflow regenerate the same exact lattice but on a fundamentally different part. If we wanted to apply this to a femoral stem, we can do that as well. And the same applies to a tibial tray. The integration of lattice structures into metal implants was a major advancement to improve osseointegration, which clearly shows the huge impact additive manufacturing has on medical devices. And anthropology makes the design of these 3D printed implants much easier and faster. The takeaway here is that when you're using anthropology, you're not just designing a part, rather you're designing a process. And it is this process that is reusable and redeployable across any part and any product line in your business. I hope you got a good understanding of anthropology and how it can be used and applied within medical devices. Thank you, and I hope you learned something new today. If you'd like to see a technical validation, check out the case study with SI Bone that walks through a similar process that I described today. If you think this would impact your design workflow, request a demo and talk to an NTOP expert to optimize your design process. Lastly, if you like this video and want to see more, go to anthropology.com under resources and videos and check out all of our videos here. Thank you.